At the root of all of this technology is the work of Nikola Tesla. He is the godfather of all of this. Everything that we use to this day that has electrical power making its source goes back to Nikola Tesla. My name is Warren White. Like, I'm a radiant energy technician. <laughs> I'm a chaos coordinator, man. I, I, <laughs> I am an electrician. I, I, um, I, my name is Warren White. I'm an electrical device hobbyist. I'm a life hacker. I'm certainly not a scientist. I'm an independent researcher that is also like a very enthusiastic hobbyist because there's so much technology and uh, there's so much theory and there's great documentation and so much information that can be brought into my simple hobby and my, my independent research that I can develop on that I, I, I think of myself more as uh, I, I'm, I'm just, let's put it this way, I, I'm a very enthusiastic hobbyist when it comes to magnets. We're fortunate enough to be able to use some of the apparatus here for our demonstrations of magnetic forces. It's all about magnetism. We use magnetism to create electricity. We use magnetism to create radiant energy as well. I do have a deeper understanding for the work that I do because of the research I've done into radiant energy technology. I work in the electronics industry. I do power and performance work for a uh, silicon company here locally. How interesting it is that I work where I do and do the type of work that I do now because the radiant energy work that I had done previously in my life. I had worked with batteries very, very intimately and now my entire focus in this industry is to develop and, and benchmark devices so that we can get the longest battery life possible out of the newest technology coming out on the market. The type of field that I work in uh, is completely different than radiant energy. It's fascinating and it's, it's definitely ahead of the curve. Radiant energy is a completely different understanding and approach to using um, energy that you can use with a battery. So radiant energy, it's more of a, um, an umbrella term for a, quite a few different types of um, devices out there that use the radiant field of a magnet, literally the magnetic field coming off of a permanent magnet, to uh, create energy. Radiant energy, the way that I develop it, is used to uh, collect the field of a, of a magnet and that energy spike that's created by the effect of a permanent magnet going over a copper coil and an iron core, then you use a simple circuit to collect that instantaneous moment of a high voltage spike and transmit that to a, uh, a battery or a capacitor and the battery or the capacitor then 
translates that energy into usable DC power. The root of all of this technology ended up being the work of Nikola Tesla. But most of this work with radiant energy, I only understand from the point of John Bedini and his work. He utilized his understanding of Tesla's work to develop the circuit. I have been developing John Bedini's circuit and Nikola Tesla's radiant energy technology to develop the devices that I've made. The understanding that Nikola Tesla had put forward in the turn of the century, and this man who developed this circuit was using his technology with the new circuit that he had built and his lifetime of understanding of how to build that circuit and then gave it to the world to, to develop and try to see what anyone could come up with. You say you got these batteries out of the trash? Yeah, I did. The, most of this motor that you see right here is all uh, junk out of the trash. These are 12-volt uh, lead-acid batteries from uh, battery backup for computers. I uh, could no longer take a charge. But what I did pay for was these meters. They were about $5 a piece from uh, Harbor Freight. Yeah, and then you were saying this was 20 bucks for this, for everything in there, right? Yeah, for the components yeah. to build that circuit is about $20. And then, um, like, the, the coil here was I took all the wire out of an old dead transformer and rewound it sloppily on this spindle ugly. just I to see. It works so well. Yeah, it works really well. And then the frame is also a, 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 from an old prototype piece of junk. And then the, uh, the rotor is, the, is an old SCSI hard drive that I just repurposed for this. And I, put, I, tape, I mounted the magnets on the outside of that and they're, they're perfect spinning pieces of junk. So the whole thing in total was about 30 to $40 to build this simple motor and it's charging very efficiently. Okay. Now a really well-built system will cost the same price and charge it's very, a lot more efficiently. How do you stop this crazy thing? You just use your hand. Just stop it like that? You can see that there's three magnets on there. So it took, this all took was three magnets and a little electromagnetic copper coil to run that thing. Yeah, and a little spin okay. gets it going. It again. So congratulations, you built your first motor. Cool. Can't wait for the next one. Repurposing devices to, to utilize, and I found that when you change the architecture with intent, on the way that you build these devices, as you expand on them, they have a different reaction every time. Every single one of them is unique, just like a human being. They're like stars. It's inevitable to start playing around with magnets and not want to build something that levitates. It's just inevitable. You want to build a device that levitates. And once you start doing that, you want to see how big you can go. I have built many levitating devices, all the way up to a 12 pound rotor that was about four feet long that was absolutely amazing to, to, to have in operation. Spooky as can be to be around when it was operating because it was, it was, a, it was uh, spinning so fast, it was a little hazardous. But when you work with levitation, you no longer have the friction of a mechanical bearing. You no longer have the limitations of something that will wear out over time. You now have no construct that will keep your device running in the same capacity for longer than any other device that has a bearing or that, does, uh, that, that creates heat when, it, when it's in motion. If you wanna build this right now, I will show you the exact components I will instruct you on the exact process so you can build yourself a complete circuit of working system that you can start to utilize right now. Even my mom. Even your mom, even your dad, even anybody who just never done electronics before, I will show you in a way, step by step, that makes it completely digestible and fun. And then from there, it's up to you. You can continue to have fun with this device, make it a toy or just a showpiece, or you can expand upon it, which I would like to show you as well. That is more enticing to me, more addictive. I, I love to build these things because it's, it's a very healthy hobby to have, but it also does something. I'm nearly 50 years old. 
nothing gives me more joy than actually developing this stuff. It, I, I have other hobbies, I skateboard, I'm, I, my, I have an awesome wife, we have wonderful times in hiking together, but there is a deep-seated desire for me to keep developing these types of technologies because it's fast, there's no limit. It's, it's not only fun, it's free. You, you can find and locate all the components you need and the garbage that surrounds you in the, in, the, in the day. But when you actually put something together that works and then you can develop on that working unit and just stretch its capabilities and stretch its ability to, to entertain. Why are you passionate about this? One word. And start this with one word to describe why I'm passionate about this. One word to describe why I'm so passionate about this. It's exhilarating. It's life changing. It, it's a little mystery involved. It's like a little friend who's constantly teasing you into looking deeper into like, hey, you know, there's a little mystery here you might want to check out. And there's all kinds of those fun little rabbit holes, but every single one of them dives from the world of magnetism. It, there's nothing more mystical than magnetism. It is the thing that we would not exist without. We have this gigantic magnetic field that surrounds our, our planet. Our planet itself is a giant magnet that creates these standing wave fields of the Van Allen belts and everything that burst out charged particles that keep us being, you know, skateboarders and dorks hanging out on camera in this world. Without it, we would be nothing. Without Magnetism, we are absolutely nothing. To be turned on by magnetism is the most, I'm sorry, it's the most amazing path to go down because you could find tangible places to land, tangible projects to work on. You can create things with magnetism that cannot exist without it. Our world would not exist without understanding the magnetic field. One word to describe what this does for me. I don't have a word for that. It would be more like continually fueled curiosity, satisfying unobtainable knowledge. It's just, it's, it's like love. It, once you get a taste of it, it, it's just fascinating to find deeper parts.